You're listening to Scaling Up Services, where we speak with entrepreneurs, authors, business experts, and thought leaders to give you the knowledge and insights you need to scale your service-based business faster and easier. And now, here is your host, business coach, Bruce Eckfeld. Are you a CEO looking to scale your company faster and easier? Check out Thrive Roundtable. Thrive combines a moderated peer group mastermind, expert one-on-one coaching, access to proven growth tools, and a 24-7 support community. Created by Inc. award-winning CEO and certified scaling up business coach, Bruce Eckfeldt, Thrive will help you grow your business more quickly and with less drama. For details on the program, visit Eckfeldt.com slash thrive. That's E-C-K-F-E-L-D-T dot com slash thrive. Welcome, everyone. This is Scaling Up Services. I'm Bruce Eckfeldt. I'm your host. And our guest today is Chinton Panchel, and he is founding partner of a very specialized law firm focused on impact investing, RPCK. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on just in the business community in general right now. We're in the middle of, well, actually, we're probably still in the beginning of COVID-19 kind of response, but we're looking at a lot of uncertainty, a lot of questions around how is this going to play out? How is it going to impact business in general? How is it going to impact the markets? And so Jen and I are going to have a little conversation on, on what people can expect and particularly how the investing world is going to be impacted <laughs> by this or at least respond to it and how some of the differences might be. Hopefully some conversations that will give some insights to leaders who are listening to this program, help make some decisions about where they're going to go with their companies, about strategy, about what to expect, but what to prepare for. So it'll be an interesting and very timely conversation. Looking forward to it. And um, I'm curious to to learn as well on this. So with that, Chinton, welcome to the program. Thank you, Bruce. Great to be here with you yeah. uh, in this especially crazy time. Yes, yes, it is. And I, I know you're recording from your car <laughs> in, yeah. in Connecticut. I'm, <laughs> yes. I'm in my bedroom right. in Fort Lee, yes. New Jersey. Uh, <laughs> we're all quarantining and sheltering right. in place. So I know totally. we're all dealing. Important to note, I'm not actually driving my car. <laughs> yeah, yes, kidding. exactly. Like, no, you're, you're, you're sheltering <laughs> <right>. in car. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's, uh, it's crazy times. And I know that that um, everyone is dealing with personal situations and, you know, kind of the impact on their families and situation and, you know, communities. So uh, I know it's a stressful, hard time, but I, I do appreciate you taking some time to, to have this conversation and talk a little bit about really what we're going through, what we might expect or what we need to kind of put on our strategic plans here, decisions we need to make. But why don't we start with just a little bit of understanding about your background, how you kind of work with your clients, the kind of clients you work with, and then we can kind of get into the dynamics that you're seeing. Absolutely. Okay. So, my background. So I'm a lawyer by kind of background, uh, but I'm an entrepreneur, which is kind of how you and I know each other and how we've, we've connected. I started uh, this law firm, RPCK Rastigar Punchal, a little over 10 years ago. And I started it to focus on providing kind of guidance, advice, deal structuring, you know, a lot of the types of things that lawyers do, but a bit more than what kind of traditional lawyers have thought of in doing. And to really focus on that type of work with you know, a whole host of individuals and organizations who are generally focused on making the world a better place, right? However, they define that themselves, right? But what we look for are people who are very intentional in terms of what they do and how they go about doing it. And we're there as one of, you know, many different kind of folks within this kind of overall impact investing, social enterprise, SRI, ESG, you know, kind of intentional. We can talk about all of those kind of alphabet soup, but generally speaking, (laughs) I think of as kind of intentional, multiple bottom line focused, you know, kind of folks. And, um, you know, we're part of the infrastructure that kind of helps people conceptualize and effectuate kind of these types of transactions. Yeah. And so it's deal work at the end of the day, but it's kind of institution building, it's field building, it's it's working with incredible people. Kind of th- that's kind of the context, you know, when you break it down, we're we're a law firm, we're a team of lawyers that that you know are helping kind of people kind of navigate their way through these types of multiple bottom line transactions and and right now is a really really kind of interesting time. We're mm-hmm. we're seeing you know, we're seeing our kind of impact and intentional kind of clients go in one direction and we're seeing our kind of 
traditional private equity, corporate finance, M and A kind of people who think less about impact in terms of how they go about doing what they do, kind of go in a bit of a different direction. So we're kind of at this very interesting kind of beginning of a fork in the road, I think. Yeah. Well, and give me a sense of kind of the history of this because I think impact investing, triple bottom line, you know, the, these terms are somewhat new, but they've been around yeah. for a little while. I mean, mm-hmm. what's been your kind of, or I guess, what's your take on the trajectory? Like when when this yeah. this become kind of a, a thing and where totally. is it going? Like how, how is this a, a kind of a niche part of the market? Is it becoming a much more mainstream approach? How, how are the dynamics playing out in terms of kind of the world of impact investing as it relates to investing overall? Sure, sure. I'll tell you a story. So when I when I started this firm and we first started working kind of in the impact investing space with impact investors, the kind of dominant or the most common conversation I would have would be, you know, a variation of the following two things. One, what is that? Like, what, what is impact? Like, what are you talking about? Right. Mm-hmm. And then the second is, isn't that just philanthropy? Right. Kind of, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, are people just giving away their money and they're just calling it something different. Right. And that was, you know, every conversation you go to a cocktail party, you go to kind of talking to, you know, people in a business, you know, meeting in a boardroom, you know, left, right and center was kind of this kind of idea that, you know, that, that came from this kind of traditional paradigm, right. Where, Historically, right, if you cared about some things, some set of issues, some some topics, right, kind of whether it be kind of the environment or animals or child welfare or, you know, what, whatever it is that, that really kind of was got you, got you passionate. The traditional paradigm was, you know, you do your job, right, you, know, you do your work, whatever that is, you sell your products and you make as much money as you possibly can. And then you give some of that away. Or if you're, you know, you know, if you're like some people, you kind of spend the second half of your life giving all of it away, mm, right? Yeah. But nevertheless, it was this kind of left pocket, right pocket kind of mentality, right? And that's kind of, you know, historically the way, you know, it's been. And, you know, around 2007 is when this idea kind of started really coming onto the scene. Now, of course, there have always been mission-driven organizations, right? The Patagonia is a, you know, 30-year-old company or something like this, right? There's There's been community development financial institutions, CDFIs that have been, you know, doing really kind of mission-led, mission-oriented work in local communities, right? So there have been people, kind of very, very niche kind of businesses and organizations that have been doing kind of mission-led investing and lending type of work. But as far as kind of the mainstream goes and the world that we see now, right, where you have impact product and ESG is kind of on the lips of all financial advisors and you have, mm. you know, the likes of BlackRock and Bain Capital and Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley and City and, you know, every major financial institution has an impact platform and an impact product base. And, you know, and everyone's, you know, an impact investor these days, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of that phenomenon that, you know, that where it's really become mainstream and it's been something that, you know, everyone is aware of and talking about, or at least hearing about, that I would say is at most three years old, right? Kind of within the last two to three years is really when it started becoming mainstream. And the conversation has evolved from what is this and isn't it just philanthropy to, I'd say maybe about five years ago, it was kind of like, all right, well, you know, there have been people that have been doing this, right, for a long time. And uh, and then there's all these new entrants into the space and it's been this, a little bit of this kind of like, uh, hold on, this is my ball. And, (laughs) you know, what are you all doing here on my playground, right? You've seen a bit of that, right? And there's kind of questions of authenticity. You might have heard of this term called greenwashing, right, which is Mm -hmm. kind of, is this really just a marketing initiative or is there something behind it, right? Is this really intentional? Is this really authentic? That's been a conversation that's really kind of taken place, in my view, kind of since the last five years. And then within the last, you know, three, you know, two, three years, it's really kind of now it's starting to kind of turn into a more sophisticated conversation where people understand, right? And pe- people have generally bought into this notion that you can do good while doing well, right? You can invest for returns and expect kind of market rate, kind of risk adjusted returns, right? You know, and also do good or be aligned with your own personal values or build a business that 
is in the business of solving major challenges that society faces, whether they be environmental, societal, or, or you know, kind of multiple or triple bottom line, if you will. Mm-hmm. I think that's less of a question mark, right? That's less of a debate, right? It's less of a, you know, controversial, you know, idea mm-hmm. that you can do both of this, right? P- partially because data has, there is a lot of data out there now that one can look at, especially in the public markets, with, you know, with respect to benchmarks and the like, and anecdotal data, is particularly in the private markets. And you have seen lots of very successful social enterprises, you know, take off. And and it's especially in times like this, where people are thinking about kind of connectedness and coming yeah. together and helping. And, you know, the this notion that, you know, everyone's out there just to make a buck, you know, it might be okay a month ago, right? Where everyone's just like, yeah, of course, you know, that company and those guys or these guys or, you know, whatever, everyone's out there just doing whatever they do to make as much money as they possibly can. That is less acceptable in times like this when everyone's suffering, right? And this notion that we're all in this together and that we're really here to help each other, or we should be really here to help each other. That should be the driver behind what we're doing and how we're doing. Of course, we can make money and live our lives and kind of run our businesses and pay our employees and all this kind of stuff, right? But, you know, this notion that you lead from service and you lead from benefit, you lead from help, you lead from a, uh, from a from a kind of outward looking perspective is something that has been part of the impact investing kind of outlook you know from the beginning and i think that is something that is very kind of relevant in the world today yeah no absolutely so i think two two questions that i'd love to kind of explore i think one one is really kind of understanding, you know, how, how do we really under, kind of define what good is? And then uh, mm-hmm. we talk a little bit about what's going on with COVID and how it's impacting, obviously, the financial markets, but what you think some of the implications 100%. are going to be in terms of how things. So in terms of how do we define what good is? I mean, I think, you know, conceptually, yeah. I think people understand that, oh, OK, yeah, it's, it's more than about making money. You need to have some kind of, you know, positive impact on society and culture and your communities. But how do you actually mm-hmm. define that and how do you measure mm-hmm. that and how do you choose like what that good is going to look like, you know, given that, uh, you know, sometimes that's a little subjective or, you know, one person's good may be not or some, well, one person's what is doing really good may not be someone else's version of what's doing yep. really good. And how do you, how do you, you know, totally. money is easy. Money is objective. It's dollars and cents. I can put a number on it. I can, you know, <laughs> there's, right. there's things I can point to. This other side feels like it could get squishy. How do you deal with that from an investment point of view? Yeah. Yeah. In many ways, it's the question, right? Yeah. And, and I completely agree with you. It is squishy. Right? I think we start from there. And so as an advisor, right, I, and I'm, I'm an investor myself, right? And so whether I have my investor hat on, whether I have my advisor hat on, my lawyer hat, the thing I can start with is that I try to meet people where they are, right? I say, listen, I don't define impact. I don't define good. I don't define bad. But I do care about authenticity in whatever you define it as, right? So Bruce, you might say, I care about uh, you know, child welfare in the developing world, right? Mm-hmm. Or you might say, I care about kind of carbon emissions, or I care about co- pollution in my local communities, or, you know, whatever those things are that you say you care about, right? Then we have something to work with, right? And then we say, all right, well, what does that mean? Well, how do we define the problem? How do we define the challenge? Yeah. And then we go from there and we say, all right, well, how can our activity, right? And you can think about your philanthropic activity. You can think about your, you know, the, the things that you do in your personal life. You can also think about the work that you do in your business. And you can also think about the investments that you make, right? And how and where you choose to invest your investment capital, right? You, you have all these different tools at your disposal to help, if you wish, to work towards those things that you happen to care about, right? And this is the subset of folks that either A, are saying, listen, I, you know, in my work, in the business I develop, in the company that I run, in the department or the division that I look after within this corporation, et cetera, mm-hmm. I or we as a, as a group, as a family, as an institution, as a, as a community care about these things. And kind of the, the other is, of course, as an investor, whether it's, you know, you know, the asset owner themselves or it's the professional manager, right? You could be a, a venture capital fund manager, right? A private equity fund, you know, debt fund, hedge fund. You, you know, you could be a fiduciary of other people's capital and you could have a perspective on this, right? But that perspective is where we look for kind of authenticity and and we really try to drill down into what people really mean yeah. by I care about this or that or the other thing, right? And because I agree with you. I think there is no, you know, it's a, it's kind of a college 
philosophy debate about what is good and where yeah. is it and you know is something really good right that's a it might be fun to think about and, and talk about but concrete reality how can we work with how can we actually build a business how can we build an investment portfolio how can we kind of take this thing and actually turn it into something real that you know that starts with kind of where where somebody is right so that's kind of where it starts yeah the second piece i want to kind of mention is you know and i think this is the key to it is it's you know that a lot of people would think about this and say, all right, well, we're a business and we make widgets, right? And that's that's our, that's why we're here. That's what we do. And we understand that we have to do something good. We have to be socially beneficial, right? And so, you know, people can think about, all right, well, let's reinvest in our community or let's do this or let's every widget we sell, we'll give another one away or, mm-hmm. you know, wh- yeah. whatever it is, right? That's kind of, that's certainly one way of looking at it. I, I think that's not the most successful way of looking at it, but it's not wrong per se. Mm-hmm. In my experience, there's another way of looking at it, which is to say, how can our business be an engine that drives the change or the good that we have defined and we're looking for, right? Meaning as this business or this investment performs better in an objectively verifiable financial kind of you know standpoint, from a financial standpoint, yep. if we sell more product, is that product making a, a positive impact in the types of things that we care about, we genuinely care about, or is it not, right? Just that thought, right? That being intentional about that is critical, I think, yeah. right? And those are the businesses that I think are best poised to be successful. Those are the investment strategies that are best poised to be both kind of risk-adjusted, resilient, as well as kind of alpha-creating and, su- and successful, right? And, that's, and I'm not an investment advisor, right? That's my yeah. personal observation right? yeah. as, as someone who kind of is vol- involved in this community and is kind of advising people on how to build these things, right? Yeah, it's um, interesting. I mean, yeah. I've worked with a few yeah. a few companies yeah. that are, you know, either B Corp or have, you know, either formerly or informally a triple bottom line kind of philosophy and and it's mm-hmm. it's kind of um it's both more complicated because you do end up in this well we have to we have to define things right like we ha- we actually need to yep. define okay well, what is the impact we want to achieve how do we measure this what are the goals that we want to set how do we you know put those into real kind of you know yep. performance criteria as, mu- as much as we do our earnings ratios and you know financial performance but it's also a wonderful opportunity because you can really start to define this stuff for yourself you, you can really yep. make some decisions you can really explore what kind of impact do you want to have? And so, yes, it, it is squishy, <laughs> but in that squishiness <laughs> yep. is also, you know, the, yep. the ability to really kind of define some values and create real engagement, yes. you know, for not only your employees, but all of you, you know, your stakeholders, your partners, your vendors, exactly. you know, it's, it, 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 creates a real, yeah, yep. it creates a real alignment, which is, which is powerful. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's yeah. the one thing I tell everyone is <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> right? You know, honestly, easy. dollars yeah. and cents, it's really easy to just kind of right. drive all your decision making by dollars and cents. And I, and I think that's why, you know, a lot of people get a little daunted by it, but um, right. yeah, it's certainly challenging. It's not easy. I agree with you, but it's also certainly not impossible and yes. it could add massive win to your sales if you get it right. Yeah. Right. And all of those are true statements. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I want to kind of pick up on something you just said, right. Which is, and just reiterate that, right. You kind of, you said stakeholders, right. And that's, I think the key here. So I would say in the traditional kind of kind of business or investing standpoint, you would you would think of this in terms of shareholders, yes. right? Yeah. Stakeholders is a broader category of individuals, organizations. It's you could define the environment as as a broader Absolutely. stakeholder, right? Yeah. It's kind of how you think about that, right? So and that is really the key, right? Kind of as an impact investor, you have a broader aperture, right? You you open the lens up to a, a much broader kind of picture. And now all of a sudden you're thinking about, you're being intentional about the effects of your activity, whether it be investing, whether it be kind of conducting the business, whether it be whether it be kind of reacting in the age of COVID-19, you're thinking about the effects of each of these actions on a broader set of stakeholders, right? So if you're thinking, if you're the investor, you're the shareholder and you're, you know, you're going to be making an investment and then COVID-19 happens, right? And this is the world we're living in right now. And you'd say, all right, well, I got to, you know, I get a conservative cash and you just pull out, right? Mm -hmm. You're taking care of the shareholder, right? That's what you're doing. There's nothing wrong with that per se. No no one's going to criticize you for that. But if you're an impact investor, you might kind of take a step back and you might say, well, all right, well, you know, there's this crazy situation going on in the world right now. And, uh, you know, I was set to make this investment. And I do need to obviously and certainly take care of the shareholder, but there are a whole bunch of other people on the list that I'm thinking about. And that might include, you know, the the 
company itself that one is thinking about investing in. It might include the employees of that company. It might include the folks whom are the the customers or the or the clients or the people who rely on the services, the goods and services that that company creates. It might be the vendors and the joint venture partners and the broader contacts in the community around that particular enterprise, right? The same group of people that you would have been intentional about as going into the investment, perhaps you will also be intentional about as you're thinking about whether to make the investment or whether to pull from the investment, right? That is, yeah. These are the types of decisions that we're seeing and conversations that we're having in the space right now. Yeah. Um, it's interesting, not, not to get too philosophical about it, but I think there's sure. th- there's a, a big shift, at least in the people that I see that I have worked with that have, you know, either involved with or running companies that are more kind of impact investing, you know, socially conscious. Generally, what I find is they're much more kind of systems thinkers around mm-hmm. how how what they do impacts things. They're much better at understanding kind of the secondary, tertiary, you know, effects of the decisions they make, the investments they make, the choices they're making, and understanding that they operate inside of a larger kind of ecosystem, whether it be, you know, a biological or financial or, uh, you know, social community. Like there is a series of events that will happen, a series of consequences, and they tend to be much better about understanding, you know, how, how the kind of, not only the long term will will play out, but how how the, the sort of series of dominoes will fall given what they're doing. And, and, and ultimately, you know, I find they're, because they have that kind of longer term, more systemic kind of approach to things, or ultimately more successful in the sense of building, you know, sort of quote unquote value, whether it be, you know, monetary or social community value. But it does take a real kind of shift in mindset, I find. I don't, I don't know what your, yeah. your experience is. Could, I couldn't agree with you more. I think that's exactly right. And I think that in order to do this well and to do it kind of consistently and, and successfully, I think you have to have that perspective on it, right? I, I think that not only is it a great observation, but I think it's kind of, it's almost prescriptive, right? It's kind yeah. of, it, it, almost by definition, right? If you're an impact investor, you, you know, almost definitionally, or or you're a social entrepreneur, or, you know, you're leading or running as, you know, a socially conscious or socially minded enterprise, right? And, you know, you could think of, you know, a, you know a, a mega global corporation, or you could think of a, you know, two person kind of you know, mom and pop business, you can think of Mm -hmm. an individual with a 401k portfolio, or you can think of, you know, a massive family office or a big, well-known kind of uh, investment fund, right? All of these folks, uh, among all of those folks, you you have to be, I think, and I I love the way you put it, right? Kind of a systems thinker, right? You're, You're thinking about a broader set of systems within which these yeah. businesses, these investments, these these decisions, they live, right? And they coexist. Yeah. And that is kind of the point. Right? Yeah. It's kind of, you know. Well, uh, the exactly. fact is, it's the reality. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, can, I mean, you can choose not to think that way. <laughs> <laughs> totally. You're still going to be yeah. impacted by it. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can close your eyes to yeah. the fact that, you yeah. know, there is a you know society within which we all live. And yeah. There's an environment that gets affected. That doesn't mean that it's not affected, right? Yeah. It, you know, we have you know, a, uh, we have the amount of carbon in the air right now yeah, that we exactly. do for a reason, right? Yeah, we exactly. have pollution because of, there's a plastic, of you know, that were clogging up the oceans, yeah. right? Exactly. That is because I think a lot of people weren't really kind of looking or thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, but now I think people are. Yeah. And I think, uh, and then a whole bunch of other people recognize that their successful businesses and successful investments in building the solutions to some of these problems. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about sort of the COVID situation and, you know, mm-hmm. we're, you know, we're recording this the end of March, you know, and I think for all the all, all kind of predictions is that we're kind of at the beginning of the curve here and, and we will see, you know, things getting worse over the coming weeks and months from a kind of health and a social point of view. But I think it's an interesting, you know, kind of case or, or situation where you see, I think you literally see this playing out in terms of decisions that people trying to make. I mean, not to get too political on it, but, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm seeing things in the news where there's this discussion of, well, you know, should we shelter in place or should we just go around, you know, should we, should we not to stimulate the economy? Like how much are we willing to kind of trade off? Is the problem, is the solution worse than the problem? You know, I think there's a lot of this kind of discussion going on, or at least, you know, people are grappling with these kind of issues. Right. And and even the situation we're in with, you know, not enough masks in certain cases and, you know, not investing in certain public, you know, uh, uh, you know, public institutions to be able to help with these things. I mean, there's there's a lot of this stuff. I mean, how as an investor and what you you're seeing in terms of 
the companies that you've worked with either on, you know, the more traditional financially kind of structured versus the impact structured. What's the difference in terms of response, in terms of thinking, yeah. strategic kind of processing? What have you kind of noticed as as we're faced with this literally world pandemic here in, in terms of um, yeah. community? How is it affecting the business side? Yeah. So I think of right in a, in a calamity, right, in a crisis, right, you see kind of generally speaking, you see kind of two categories of folks, right? Some people that kind of run away from the situation and some people that run towards it, right? And that's always the case. It's just kind of almost a human nature type of thing. But, you know, and, and I think you're absolutely right, right? There's a, there's a health, there is, you know, the kind of the driver here and the key, uh, you know, the core consideration, of course, is the health piece of it, right? I, you know, I'm certainly not, not qualified to speak to any of that, but there is a directly related kind of economic calamity that we're, that we're, we're seeing as well, right? And so, we have lots of, we're working with lots of different folks who are in that proverbial running towards the problem dance, right? Because the conversations I'm having are around, in our impact, kind of, you know, in the practice with our clients. And a lot of the stuff that we're doing is in getting kind of thoughtful and creative around providing emergency bridge loan facilities mm -hmm. and thinking about how to save a deal, how to reimagine in a transaction so that it can go forward, a transaction can go forward as kind of this binary kind of thought of you can play the eject button or kind of proceed, right? Neither one of those is necessarily the right decision in, yeah. in the context of this type of uh, situation, right? The, the people that, you know, and the organizations and institutions that we we get to work with, uh, you know, it's it's really amazing, right? Because people are kind of buckling down and moving in and you know, and there, you know, significant uncertainty and there is a lot of fear and there's a lot of, you know, concern kind of in the space. And there is kind of this systems-based uh, focus and and this kind of broader perspective that brings people to the problem with potential solutions or at least the willingness to kind of look at and think about and create. Yeah. I'm very encouraged by that in terms of what I'm saying. It's still very early days. This isn't this isn't meant to be a critique, right, of, of anyone else, right? I've, I, everyone mm -hmm. makes their own decisions in terms of what they think is best for themselves and, you know, the people kind of whom they kind of report to or, or kind of are, are. Yeah, the forces that they're under. And therefore each, you know, yeah, exactly. I think everyone makes their own decisions. Right. And, and, you know, we hope those decisions are right. But I would say that there's an interesting difference. I think we're seeing the same thing on the other side when it comes to, you know, we're making investments in the great economy. I think we're seeing that. And this is the first time that the kind of impact space has really been tested. Right. Yeah. The impact community, as we know, wasn't around in 2008. And so this is kind of the first major test of that community. Let's see what happens. It's hard to tell right now, but I definitely see some encouraging sides. Yeah. And how do you see this playing? I mean, right now we're kind of in this seizing up process, right? Like everyone is hoarding cash. Everyone is kind of figuring out, uh, mm -hmm. you know, how, how to kind of protect themselves. You know, it's a fairly individualistic yeah. defensive posture most people are taking. How, mm -hmm. like, what's the process for this kind of loosening up for things to start moving again? I don't think anyone's really, you know, know what the timeline <laughs> is going to be, but at least what the process might right. be and what right. would need to happen practically or psychologically for folks to kind of get there. Right. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think it's definitely... It's a confidence kind of measure, right? It's trust. It's confidence. It's there's an emotional component to this, right? There's yeah. feeling, right? That's driving this, right? Kind of people, I think, understandably don't trust what the future holds, right? They don't. They don't have security and respect of kind of what. And so, therefore, I think it's a very natural response. Yeah. And I think the government certainly has a massive role to play here, right, in helping kind of bring trust and stability back into the system. But the government, I think, can't do it alone. I think the government has to be the major player, you know, and, and, and that's what we're seeing kind of across the world right now with these stimulus packages and the like. But eventually and soon, Private participants have to start following along, right? Somebody's got to take that leap of faith. Mm -hmm. And some critical mass of people need to take that leap of faith that, that will allow capital to start flowing again, right? And the flow of capital, that is the key here, right? It's If the government gives everyone a check, right, and every corporation a check, and they just put that in their bank account, their pocket, yeah, yeah. I think we're not going to have the kickstart effect that we're looking for, right? It's, you know, and so this is an instance in which, you know, I think about public 
public-private partnerships. I think about blended finance between philanthropic actors, right, mm-hmm. who have capital to give away, and they're there to literally give away capital. Right? That mm-hmm. is the point of philanthropic institution, right, uh, or foundation, for example. Yeah. And this is a time, I think, uh, for thoughtful, coordinated kind of activity, right? And between government actors, between the private sector, between the philanthropic sector. In the impact world, that's generally considered, you know, blended finance, right? The kind of this notion that these three sectors that typically kind of are siloed off, you know, come together in respect of achieving some set of impacts, right? Well, it's kind of like the biggest impact you can possibly imagine, right? It's kind of like saving the world economy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and society, right? Kind of as we know it, right? It yeah. kind of sounds odd to be thinking about things in these kind of massively drastic terms. But generally speaking, I think that there is a need and a call for kind of blended finance on a massive scale, right? That it's targeted at kind of certain elements and certain kind of sectors and, and really focused on bringing that trust back into the market space, whereby, you know, people are, are, starting to kind of work together and, and build and and do, um, as opposed to kind of hoard and wait and see and hide. Defend. Do you see, you know, obviously the horrible, horrible global tragedy that we're going through, do you see this having an impact in terms of, you know, as we come out of this and people start kind of thinking about the investments they're making, Mm -hmm. about how we're structuring these things, do you anticipate a shift here in terms of attitudes, approaches, strategies that people use now that we've been through a global crisis that really yeah. has literally affected everyone. The silver lining, if you will, huh? Yeah, so yeah. It's something that kind of brings us all together. You know what? You know, I'm an entrepreneur, so I am kind of by definition an optimist. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> I'm also a lawyer, so I'm kind of <laughs> a pessimist. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, I think that the idea that this is there, that this is a thing, right? That one can align the things that they care about, right? And, you know, we're all in some search for meaning, right? Yeah. Kind of, it's, it is a kind of human, human thing, right? To kind of be on the search for meaning. And a lot of people find the expression of that in their family and in their philanthropy and in, in these kind of very personal ways. I think that this notion that people will be exposed to or can become exposed to this idea that you can further find that alignment in your work and in your investing and in these other spheres of your life, right? I think that is that is an opportunity, right? This, yeah. this notion that it can be. But do I think we're going to see a paradigm shift? Honestly, man, I, I think I'm a bit of a pessimist on that one. <laughs> right after 2008, what did yeah. we see, right? Yeah. Kind of, <laughs> you know, I, I think that people are kind of desperately kind of waiting and hoping for things to get back to normal so that things can back to, get back to normal. Yeah, yeah. You know, and normal is kind of what it was. Obviously, will things change? Absolutely. Yeah. Right? And will the world emerge from this different? Absolutely. In good and bad ways, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the impact investing space isn't certainly isn't going to be shrinking. It's not going anywhere, right? And I think if, if anything, it, it has been, it was, uh, you know, until this kind of happened a couple of weeks ago, exploding onto the scene. I think it will continue. I think it will, lots of people in that community will find ways to lead in the context of this this challenge and it will continue to grow. Uh, and I think that that will happen. Yeah, I think you're right. I'll be I'll be curious. Obviously, I'm, uh, I think everyone was looking forward to being through the eye of the storm in terms of you know yeah. what we're going through right now. But I'll be curious to see what does kind of change, what discussions happen, you know, for how long and and what uh, what sticks. You know, I'm sure there's going to be a yeah. uh, an initial push or initial active discussion around some of these things. But the question is how long how long does it stay around? You know, how long do we do we stick with it? But uh, be curious to see. Yeah, yeah. Likewise. If people want to find out more about you, about the work that you do, about the organization, what's the best way to get that information? Yeah. So our website probably is the best, rpck.com. I'm on Twitter, Chintan397. Although I haven't been tweeting a ton lately. I've just been kind of, you know, kind of <laughs> you know receiving <laughs> lots of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, rpck.com. I mean, we, you know, uh, I try to kind of talk and kind of share our experiences and kind of what we see and think is working in, uh, you know, in, in many ways as I can to kind of help the, the word out. So, you know, I'll be following you even more closely, Bruce. And, uh, and also, you know, trying to have conversations with as many kind of great leaders as possible yeah. um, who, are, who are really looking to do that. Yeah, I think that's the important part is keep the discussions going. I'll make sure that the uh, information is in the show notes so people can can click through and, and get to the website and, and get you on Twitter. But Jen, this has been a pleasure. Uh, great conversation. Obviously, you know, 
interesting, challenging, sort of tragic times at, at you know, in, in many ways. But, um, you know, I think it's important we have these conversations and we, we do start to think about like, well, what is how, what does this mean? What does it tell us? Where do we want to go for it? Uh, and I think, you know, the entrepreneurs and the leaders and the business committee are going to be a huge deciding factor in terms of what comes out of this. So I encourage everyone listening to really think about it. And I really appreciate your time and your insights and your knowledge. Thank you, Bruce. It's been a pleasure. You've been listening to Scaling Up Services with business coach Bruce Eckfeldt. To find a full list of podcast episodes, download the tools and worksheets, and access other great content, visit the website at scalingupservices.com. And don't forget to sign up for the free newsletter at scalingupservices.com slash newsletter. 